Hi everyone! Um, before we begin today's sermon, will you close your eyes, bow your heads, and pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your message and your word in the Bible. We thank you that we have the Holy Spirit in us who helps us and comforts us. As we listen to today's Bible story, help us to stay focused, open our ears, open our hearts, so that we may accept all that you have given us, Lord. We thank you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you name some people who spend their lives helping others? Maybe you are thinking doctors, nurses, healthcare providers, policemen, teachers, or even pastors. Those people spend their time helping others in need, but they can't help be with you and help you every moment of the day. When you have believed on Jesus as your savior, you do have someone who is your helper all the time. This helper never takes a break, never sleeps, and is available for you all the time. We will learn more about this helper today. His name is God the Holy Spirit. Another name for the Holy Spirit is Comforter or Helper. So say it with me. The Holy Spirit is the Helper. Have you ever waited for something or someone? What have you waited for? Today we're going to talk about some people who are waiting for someone really important. Now, remember last week, we ended the story with Jesus dying on the cross buried, rose again from the dead after three days, and he promised that a helper will be coming. Jesus' closest friend have been through a lot. They have been following Jesus for three years, listening to his teachings, watching him do miracles, and learning from him. None of them would ever be the same because they knew Jesus. Then all of these things happened to Jesus, and the disciples were sad and confused. Later, they were amazed because Jesus showed up alive. It seemed too good to be true, but it was true. Jesus spent 40 days with them after that, after he rose again. And just before he rose up into heaven, he gave them a promise and a command. Listen to this verse and tell me what Jesus promised and what he commanded his followers to do. This verse comes from Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What was the promise? What was the command? The promise was that his followers would receive power when the Holy Spirit came. The command was to be witnesses, to tell others about Jesus. Do you remember another name for the Holy Spirit? He is the helper. With the help of the Holy Spirit, the disciples were to tell the whole world that Jesus died for them, was buried, and came alive again. Jesus wanted them to be witnesses. Witnesses are people who tell others what they have seen and know to be true. But there were so few disciples and so many people to tell. How could they do it? Well, God had a wonderful plan. About 10 days after Jesus went back to heaven, a special Jewish holiday was held in Jerusalem. The city where, um, in Jerusalem, where the city Jesus had been crucified. The special day was called Pentecost. Can you say that word with me? Pentecost. The Pentecost celebration brought thousands of Jewish people from many faraway places to the city of Jerusalem. These people spoke many different languages. The disciples had also gathered together in Jerusalem. They were waiting for the Holy Spirit to come and help them as Jesus had promised. Did you know that the Holy Spirit can help you too? If you believe on Jesus as your savior, rely on the Holy Spirit to help you witness. Sometimes when we are witnessing, meaning telling other people about Jesus, 
we sometimes get afraid or get a little shy or timid, and it's hard for us to tell people. Well, you can ask the Holy Spirit in you to give you courage and um, bravery to say the right words so that when you speak about Jesus to your friends, to your neighbors, they have a more open mind and willing heart to listen. The Holy Spirit is the helper. The Holy Spirit will be the disciples' helpers. The disciples knew they would need the help of the Holy Spirit if they were going to be witnesses to many people and tell all the people in Jerusalem about Jesus. So they gathered a room in a room and waited for him to come as Jesus had told them to do. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like a power, powerful rushing wind. Can you make a, the wind sound with me? Like this. And when I clap my hands, stop. Ready? The whole house seemed to be filled with the sound. Then what looked like small flames of fire rested on the head of each disciple. Through this wind and fire, God's Holy Spirit came and filled the believers. The Holy Spirit is invisible, but God used sound and sight to tell the disciples the Holy Spirit was actually there. Then suddenly, the disciples started speaking about Jesus in other languages that they didn't even know. How could they do that? By the power of the Holy Spirit. The news of this strange event spread throughout the city and a huge crowd gathered. Even though the people in the crowd spoke many different languages, each of them could understand God's message to them in their own language. The people were amazed. The crowd had never seen such a thing before. Now, some people thought the disciples were making it up or they must have been drunk because this was so strange. But Peter reminded them that the disciples were not drunk and Peter reminded the people of some words a man of God named Joel from the Old Testament once spoke many years before, telling them that about a time that when God's Holy Spirit would come and do miracles among his people. Then Peter began to boldly witness, to tell about the Lord Jesus to all the people who were gathered there. He told them it had been God's plan for Jesus to die and rise again to, to say so that sin could be forgiven. How did Peter have the courage to witness to all these people? Peter knew the Holy Spirit in him um, was in him and was he was depending on the Holy Spirit to give him power to witness. So Peter continued to speak the truth about Jesus to all the people who were gathered. Peter explained that even though people were responsible for killing Jesus, it was all part of God's plan. Peter said God brought Jesus back to life again and we are witnesses of his resurrection. When Peter finished speaking, the people realized they had sinned and they asked, what should we do? Peter told the people they needed to repent. Repenting means to realize that they have sinned and to turn to Jesus, recognizing him as God's son who died for them. They needed to believe on Lord Jesus to be saved. God wants you to believe on Lord Jesus too for him to save you. When you repent, you go before God and you pray and you ask God to forgive your sins through Jesus' blood. And when you do that, we are no longer separated from God, but we can become closer to God and have a relationship with him. This was also the message Peter gave to the people as the Holy Spirit changed their hearts that they should repent and believe on Jesus to save them. About 3,000 people gladly believed and they were saved that day as Peter witnessed by the power of the Holy Spirit. What an exciting day that must have been! From that day on, the believers met together every day to encourage each other and to learn more about how to follow after God. Every day, as the disciples continued to witness by the power of the Holy Spirit, more people were saved. 
the Holy Spirit helped them obey God and to witness to others. The Holy Spirit can help you as well. Remember the name of the person you could witness to this week. It could be a friend, it could be a relative, or it could be someone you FaceTime with. You can remember that the Holy Spirit is the helper and the God, and God can help you speak boldly and courageously about Jesus to your friends. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's message and we thank you that you sent Jesus, your son, to save us from our sin. And you also gave us the Holy Spirit in us so that when we believe on Jesus, that the Holy Spirit in us can help us and um, be witnesses to other people, Lord. So God, in this time, as we are confused and anxious and a, a bit scared with all the virus going around, we pray that the Holy Spirit in us will give, bring us comfort and we'll be able to tell other people um, about who you are, Lord. So we thank you. We love you. And in Jesus name we pray. Amen.